Thank you. I'd, I'd like to invite Ms. Karin Jabke to lead us in a word of prayer. ourselves. Blessed Master Divine, we come before you this morning returning thanks unto you for your strength and health and the ability to be here today. We ask that you embrace us and you give us the divine intervention as we come together for this conference so that we may do all necessary for the betterment of our region. We thank you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may have your seats. Good morning, one and all. Let me first of all apologize for the late start. My name is Juliana Alfred, and I am the permanent secretary in the AG's chambers, and I will be your mistress of ceremonies for the first part of this meeting. I want to begin this morning by recognizing the Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, I want to also recognize members of the cabinet who are present with us today. Senator, the Honorable Human Gil Francis, Minister for Home Affairs, Justice and National Security. I also want to recognize the Honorable Attorney General who is also with us today. I also would like to recognize as well the Deputy Director Mr. The Deputy Director of the World Intellectual Property, Mr. Mario Matas. Ministers with Responsibility for Intellectual Property of CARICOM Member States, members of the Diplomatic Corps, permanent secretaries from the region and maybe St. Lucia, distinguished representatives of the Caribbean community, distinguished representatives of the OECS, Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, head of the Caribbean section of the World Intellectual Property Organization, Regional B Bureau of Latin America and the Caribbean, Ms. Carolyn Simpson, Senior Admi Administrative Assistant, World Intellectual Property, Ms. Veronica Villa, heads of intellectual property offices of the region, members of the WIPO Ministerial Planning Committee, staff of other government departments and chambers, other specially invited guests, representatives of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. It is indeed a pleasure to welcome you to this opening ceremony. And before we get into any formalities as we did yesterday at Government House, and as we did on Tuesday, I think it was, we want to ensure that you get an experience which represents the culture of St. Lucia. After all, you are here speaking of the preservation and protection of expressions of folklore, other traditional expressions. It's all about intellectual property. And so we wanted to ensure that you got a taste of St. Lucia. So today, we've diversified a bit. We gave you dance earlier in the week. So today, we're going to give you one of our local bands, very popular, Mamai Lakai. I hand over to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. 
Much, Mama, I like I. Thank you. I'm, I, I know for a fact they enjoyed it. I saw them dancing, so everybody enjoyed it. Thank you so much. All right, so now we move on to the more formal part of the opening. I would like now to. I would like now to invite Senator, the Honorable Homan Gil Francis, Minister for Home Affairs, Justice, and National Security, to deliver some brief remarks. Minister. Thank you very much. 
Mistress of Ceremonies. Are you hearing me? Oh. Good morning to all. Deputy Director of the World Intellectual Property Organization, Mr. Mario Matus. Ministers with Responsibility for Intellectual Property, Head of the Caribbean Section of the World Intellectual Property Organization, Regional Bureau of Latin America and the Caribbean Development Sector, Ms. Carl Simpson, Senior Administrative Assistant, World Intellectual Property Organization, Ms. Veronica Villa, Distinguished Representatives of the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, Distinguished Representatives of the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, the, Hon the Honorable Attorney General of St. Lucia, Honorable Stephen Julian, Heads of Intellectual Property Offices in the region, Professor James Connolly, Clinical Professor of Technology at the Kellogg's University, Ms. Tenny Rees, Consultant on Intellectual Property for the Trademark Manual Project for the Caribbean region, Permanent Secretary, Attorney General's Chambers, Ms. Juliana Alfred, Members WIPO Ministerial Planning Committee, invited guests. I want to make a special welcome to our, my Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Luisi. Um, Chastney. Well, I, I think you're in, you're in good company. So, thank you very much for coming, um, Honorable Minister. On behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia, it is an honor to welcome you to the shores of the Helen of the West Indies and to deliver the opening address at this momentous event in the history of our region. An event of this um, niche stature sorry, showcases our region's academic achievements, our continued pursuits towards economic sustainability and the spirit of cooperation which lies within the heart of every Caribbean national. It is a reminder of the importance of collaboration in achieving our visions for our respective nations and the region as a whole. St. Lucia is pleased to provide the stage on which the region's most pressing intellectual property issues will be expounded on. With the profound support provided by the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, the region has been able to provide its people with the intellectual property insight and the means to protect their intellectual property rights. All countries represented here today can no doubt attest to the contributions they have received from the World Intellectual Property Organization. As a region, we take this opportunity to convey to the Director General of the World Intellectual Property Organization through his distinguished representative, Deputy Director Mattis. Our gratitude to the organization for the contribution made to our region, and moreover, to pledge our willingness to continue to work in tandem with WIPO to improve the existing IP rights structure and to expand, to expand the nature of IP protection across our nations. I also rise to express on behalf of my fellow ministers with responsibility for intellectual property, our gratitude to the various heads of IP offices <coughs> excuse me present here today we thank you for being the champions of ip within our jurisdictions your sacrifices of time and effort must be commended so too must your ability to execute public education and outreach initiatives build capacity within your offices while balancing administrative duties and budget allocations we wish to commend your contributions to intellectual property in the region and urge you to continue to build on the successes. Furthermore, I thank you for your participation in the preparatory meeting held on 24th and 25th July and for the re resolutions res which resulted from the meeting now laid before us today for our deliberation. We also wish to express our appreciation to CARICOM and to the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, for its contributions towards developing and harmonizing the IT, IP regime in the Caribbean. The efforts of CARICOM towards the establishment of a Caribbean patent administration system 
CPAS are laudable. As you are aware, the draft text is now in its eighth version and provides for a single appreciation application and awarding of a pet patent based on the satisfaction of regional criteria. The benefits of CPAS were expounded by Mr. David Bradford at the WIPO ministerial level meeting held in 2015. Mr. Bradford explained that for the inventors, CPAS would mean a simpler and cheaper system with one set of official fees, one set of attorney fees, and a single bureaucracy to deal with for member states. The benefit would be the ability to meet treaty obligations to provide a center of expertise in the Caribbean, the granting of a more certain legal right and the elimination of wastage of resources through the duplication of work across national IP offices. As such, it is my view that much like myself, my fellow ministers anxiously await the presentation on the proposed CPAS, which will follow later today. Moreover, discussions surrounding the establishment of a regional approach to the protection of traditional knowledge, traditional cultural expressions, and genetic resources are of particular importance to the Caribbean region. Issues such as one, how can the region adequately provide greater public education on lesser known IP areas such as geographical indications and traditional knowledge with limited economic resources to do so? Two, how do we persuade our creators and entrepreneurs that IP protection should form part of the business strategies? And three, how do we secure our traditional knowledge and folklore for, for future generations while protecting them from exploitations, from exploitation are cut crossing ones. As such, a meeting of this level serves as a think tank to propel creative solutions to these complex challenges pervading across the region. As a region, we recognize the wealth contained in our culture and the danger of exploitation, which is an ever-present reality. We acknowledge there is an urgent need to adequately protect those areas of IP rights. Admitted, admittedly, there is much work to be done in the region to protect this emerging area of protection. As Jamaica bolts ahead, no pun intended, the other nations must proceed with haste before we are left behind. We echo the findings of the traditional knowledge working group that there is need for public education capacity building campaigns and greater collaborations between key IP agencies across the region. I also wish to note the proposed trademark manual, which has been thoughtfully and meticulously prepared by Ms. Tenny Rees, consultant on intellectual property for trademark manual project for the Caribbean region. This document serves as a testament to the commitment of our region to provide equitable and uniform treatment to nationals and non-nationals. The draft manuals demonstrates the excellence of our region's academics and the ability of our people to create mechanisms to guide our decision-making processes. I anticipate that the picturesque backdrop that is our beautiful island will inspire resounding conclusions as to one, whether the areas of traditional knowledge, traditional cultural expressions, and genetic resources should be dealt with in separate provisions or a CARICOM-based approach should be adopted. Lastly, having recognized the importance of cooperation between regional IP offices and the respective trade and export agencies in the countries in extending the reach of IP knowledge, we look forward to the presentation by the Caribbean Export Agencies Agency. I am confident that all IP offices will walk away from the presentation with a renewed sense of purpose and ideas as to how they can incorporate their local trade and export agencies in the efforts to promote greater IP awareness. To my fellow ministers, our presence here is a testament to our commitment to advancing our nation's and the region's IP landscape to afford the greatest level of protection to our citizens. As we prepare to deliberate on the resolutions before us, I wish to leave you with our new marketing tagline. 
St. Lucia, let her inspire you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Francis, for this insightful presentation. Much food for thought. And um, I'm sure we all welcome your contribution. I would, I would like now to have a video, a video message being delivered by the Director General of the World Intellectual Property. So I ask that the Mr. Francis Garu. You could just turn your attention to this. Honorable Ministers, distinguished heads of IP offices, the representatives of CARICOM and the OECS, thank you very much for this opportunity to say a few words uh, at the outset of your meeting, of your extremely important meeting. I'm delighted that my colleagues are present with you. I envy them very much. Mario Matus is there, Carol Simpson, Amongst others, I envy them very much uh, to be in the beautiful St. Lucia, and I should like to extend my thanks at the outset to the Ministry of Home Affairs, Justice and National Security of St. Lucia, and to the Registry of Companies and Intellectual Property Rights of uh, St. Lucia. Uh, thank you very much for your kind hospitality and for agreeing to uh, host this meeting, with which we are very proud to be associated. Uh, it is, as I said, an extremely important meeting. It's an opportunity for dialogue amongst the chief policy makers in the field of intellectual property uh, in the Caribbean countries. It's an opportunity to set pol policy directions uh, and an opportunity also to prioritize amongst the many possible directions of policy uh, that might be set. Uh, we, I should also like to extend our uh, really profound thanks to the Caribbean country, countries for their constant support for multilateralism and for the World Intellectual Property Organization. We really rely on uh, our member states' support and engagement, <clears throat> and we're very grateful to the Caribbean countries for this, I think, very consistent approach of promoting multilateralism in times when uh, there are significant challenges to multilateralism. Well, in the world of intellectual property, <clears throat> the trends that we've seen in recent years remain similar. We see growing demand throughout the world uh, for intellectual property rights. Application numbers continue to rise and to rise at levels that outperform the, perform the performance of the world economy. Uh, we see <coughs> continuing shifts in the geography of innovation, of economic production in general. Uh, Asia has become a, a major, major participant uh, in the world of intellectual property. The majority of intellectual property applications actually in the world are generated now, some 60% on average from uh, Asia. We see increasing competition based on uh, value addition and intellectual property rights, uh, and we see uh, continuous disruption as a consequence of the introduction of new technologies. So these are all, I think, familiar trends to uh, you all uh, that we see, <clears throat> and they do have the effect of placing more and more importance on intellectual property as the mechanism by which the competitive advantage competitive advantage is secured um, and preserved uh, in very intense and changing international landscape for competition. We, uh, of course, have as our mission to support you, even if it's rather modest support, but to support you uh, in your objectives. Um, and uh, my colleagues, of course, will be taking you through various of our services that you are, I think, already very familiar with, uh, and the ways in which we can provide assistance through our global systems, the Patent Cooperation Treaty, the Madrid system for trademarks, the Hague system 
for Designs, <coughs> the Arbitration and Mediation Center. Our normative agenda, which, is, which requires a lot of patience, but again, thanks to the Caribbean company, uh, countries for uh, championing, champion, championing a number of initiatives, uh, notably uh, Jamaica's role and other Caribbean countries' role in promoting an international form of protection for country names, which is under discussion in our standing committee on uh, trademarks, um, for being actively involved in the area of agriculture and branding, for being actively involved also in the area of intellectual property and sports, uh, and of course for a continuing and very active involvement in the promotion of an international protection for traditional knowledge, traditional cultural expressions, and intellectual property associated with uh, genetic resources. We also have, besides our normative agenda, which as I said, is a long process um, where the progress is incremental and gradual, but nevertheless slowly coming in some of the areas that I mentioned, uh, we also have, as you know, a number of platforms that facilitate cooperation between uh, the various IP offices, offices in the world and an extensive program on capacity building. So thank you for your active interest in all of these services and programs of the organisation. Thank you for your support for the organisation. We are there to serve you as best we can even if we are very conscious that our contribution is a modest one. Uh, we rely on <coughs> uh, countries like the Caribbean countries for their support for multilateralism. I wish you very uh, interesting and uh, rich deliberations and many good decisions coming out of your meeting. Thank you. Please convey our own gratitude, Mr. Mattis to the Director General of WIPO. I wish to now invite Mr. Mario Matas, who is the Deputy Director General, Development Sector of WIPO, to deliver some brief remarks. Good morning. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, ministers, uh, senators, ambassadors, dear friends. I want to have a few minutes, so that's why I am jumping ahead. WIPO. My boss, the Director General, has already mentioned many things. Our job uh, in this context is to use, to facilitate the development of members, members of WIPO, to uh, develop themselves through IP. That's our job. And we devote around 20% of our budget precisely to technical assistance. The main problem is that um, it's difficult to prove that the IP, intellectual property, is, uh, it helps development. Uh, we have a lack of data. Basically, we measure it through applications. We, the, we, there are clear correlations, but not necessarily uh, causation. So it's difficult to convince you, the champions or the, the, political, the political leaders in your own countries, to use IP. What I can prove you or show you is that there is no a single developed country without being a big user of IP. So that's the connection. The other alternative is to look at countries that at some point in their life, on their history, they have been developing countries and became developed countries. Singapore, Korea, New Zealand, Israel, um, Finland, Norway, to some extent. Those countries, 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, they were in the G77 in the context of, of, the, of the UN system, and now they are developed. So those are examples that uh, the IP is, is connected with development. The problem is that we have a number of, uh, I would say, myths around, the, around IP. For instance, one very common is that IP is for the developed world, not for the developing countries. Uh, but it's not true. 
just yesterday we were talking about there are some elements of the current rules of, of IP which are very useful for, for development. For instance, we mentioned Jamaica. Uh, 40 years ago or so, more, when they developed the reggae music, they didn't have in place uh, copyright protection. And nowadays, most of the money that reggae music is produced it doesn't go to Jamaica, stay in the US or Europe. So, because they didn't have in place a proper system for, on, on, on uh, copyrights. Uh, tags or trademarks, every country which is uh, in the trade, they have names, tags for the products. It, if those products are not protected, somebody else will profit from them. Designs uh, is the same. Look at this, uh, the, this community, the capacity to create new forms, new designs. If, if those designs are not protected, somebody else will use them. So current rules are useful. Patent is much more complicated because you need a minimal level of an, an engineering. Okay, but that's our job, to help you to develop that through training. As a matter of fact, last year, we had over 70,000 people trained through internet, through distant learning courses on the basic, from the basic IP up to very sophisticated uh, training for examiners on patents and so on. So this is part of our job. We still have, we have some, I would say, myth, uh, or one area which is, to some extent, um, uh, is a friction. One is uh, medicine. People tend to say that the medicines are very expensive because of IP. We were discussing a couple of minutes ago before the, this meeting, that's not true. Uh, the, the figures for medicine is that you need around, to create a new medicine, around 10 to 15 years. And the protection is 20 years. So in the best case scenario, the protection is five years. In the case of Cuba, we were discussing that the protection usually is only two years because they, well, I will not enter into, into specifics. And the cost of a new medicine is around $2 billion. So they have to recuperate that money in two, three, four, five years. So, uh, but still, still there is a perception that medicine is, uh, the medicine's price is, is, due, is due to IP. Again, I was telling them, um, 95% of the current uh, medicine in the, in the pharmacies around the world, 95% is out of patent. It's not protected. So what's the point? What's the connection with IP? No, it's marketing, it's a, it's a good promotion, uh, uh, trademarks, brands, but IP, very little. Anyhow, uh, the, the current situation in terms of the world IP, uh, Francis already mentioned, we have, and this is growing every single year, 3.2 million of patents, um, around 7 million of, uh, uh, in the case of patent, 1.3 million are coming from China, 600,000 US. So the US is already half of China. And in China is a developing country. Uh, in trademark, 7 million around the world, designs 1 million around the world. But so we, the current rules are useful for you, please use it. But look at what, think about the future. Nobody knows who will, who will be the leaders in the 20, 30 years of time. We may guess, but we don't know. But it's an educated guess to say that in the coming future, some of the current trend will be present and more intensified, more dense in 20 years time. And all of them are highly connect, connected with IP. For instance, global value chain. If you would like to be a part of the global value chain to produce this part of the microphone, so you have to have at least two things. One, proper rules for investment, to protect the investor and the investment, and proper rules to protect IP. Otherwise, the investor will not come to produce this part in this country because of the lack of uh, protection of IP. So global value chain is part of the future. It will be increased, will be intensified, and, and is connected with IP. 3D printing. It's, it's uh, now, uh, the five years, 10 years ago, the price of a printer was $18,000. Now it's 400 around the world, and probably going down and down and down. So in the coming future, almost everybody will be able to have at home a printer, a 3D printer. And then we will be able to print our stuff. 
And if we, if we would like to use that creation, that design for our own benefit, well, I will, I will the common, the layman will ask for protection. As a matter of fact, a year ago in Geneva, there was a, next to Geneva, a kid of 13 years old that at home, he create, he designed an skateboard and he has a printer, he printed it and he started to sell the design for his friends, colleagues and at school, the, the skateboard for five francs, five dollars. That will be the common situation in five, ten years time. And those people will be asked for protection. And if they are not protected, somebody else will, will profit from that. So um, artificial intelligence is a, it's a huge issue. I will not enter into nanotechnology. Uh, so the future is IP. And the point that those countries that are not accepting the reality of IP, they are shooting their own feet. So that's the future, it's IP. And we can help you on that. Francis already mentioned that we provide, we have treaties that facilitate the use of IP. We provide services that pro facilitate your use. Actually, we are going to distribute the table with, with, um, with the, our, what is your situation, the Caribbean situation vis-a-vis -vis the treaties and the services uh, that we provide. Those are for you, not for us. We are an international organization. Our job is to help you. So all this is thought to help your development. Um, and with this, and, uh, I will make a call for you. You are the minister, prime minister. So we need political champion at home. Without your political uh, uh, push, with your, with, your, with your political support, IP will not be part of your future. So thank you very much. I hope you will enjoy this uh, meeting. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you very much, Mr. Mattis. I think in all the contributions that we have heard today, the one theme that has been underscored is the importance of intellectual property and how it underpins particularly areas of trade for this region. And so it is something that we have to continue to put at the front burner. And I think with the presence of the Prime Minister and the high delegation, you can see that St. Lucia has put it at the front burner, and we will continue to champion the cause of intellectual property rights. So this ends the formal, well, I shouldn't say formal, that's incorrect. I think you go into a more formal session. This ends the opening ceremony, and I would like now to extend some thanks First and foremost, to the Honorable Prime Minister, Alan Shastney, for taking time to be with us this morning. He also was socializing with us last night at Government House. So that shows, of course, he's very committed to this process, and we want to thank him for being here. I want to also thank the Honorable Minister, Herman Gil Francis, for his presence and his delivery today, his commitment to the process. The Honorable Attorney General, who has been with us over the last three days, three days, I think. Um, I want to also thank Mr. The, Mr. Matthias for his commitment and support. And we would like you to extend on behalf of St. Lucia, and I'm sure the region, our thanks for the continued support from WIPO. We hope that the collaboration will only grow as the years go on. I want to also say thank you to members of the Diplomatic Corps for taking time to be here with us today. The delegates who are here, the work is almost done, or should I say the work has just started. Let me rephrase that. The conference may be over, but the work has, all, the work has just started. And by your commitment over the last three days, I am convinced that this process is going to move forward. I want to also say a special thank you to the WIPO Planning Committee and especially members of the External Affairs Protocol Unit, the police, the emergency services, everybody who has provided tremendous support to Chambers in ensuring that we've gotten to this process today. 
I want to say special thank you to all of you. I would like now to invite members to join us for refreshments. Our protocol officers will take our invited guests over to the room for refreshments. Delegates, I think you also have refreshments, am I correct, at this time? Yes, and Prime Minister, you are staying with us, I hope, for a few minutes. Yes, um, if you could just stay here, we're coming. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.